What's going on guys, my name is Alden Nero and welcome to episode 76 of my Leicester City career mode on FIFA 15. It's amazing that we're this many episodes in. I say that at the start of like every episode, but it just feels incredible. Uh, we're probably going to have 100 episodes before Christmas time as well, which I think is just amazing. Um, but as you can see, we're looking at the squad report at the very start of this episode and we're closing in on the end of this season. It should only be another few, uh, maybe two or three episodes, I think. Um, three probably at the very most. Yeah, I think that that's crazy that uh, we're nearly finished season four. But uh, for season five, I think I'm gonna stick with Leicester for one more season unless I get an offer from a huge club. And then in that case, I'll run it by you guys. Be it on Twitter if you want to follow me on Twitter. The description, the link is in the description. Um. Or maybe I'll make a video if it is part of one of the episodes or whatever. But um, I'm really looking forward to the kind of rebuilding process in the summer. And I'm really looking forward to Juan Pablo Diaz coming back from his loan because I think he could be a pretty good player. And any other transfer activity that comes in, we're pretty much almost guaranteed a top two finish in the league, possibly top three. But uh, that should guarantee us a pretty hefty transfer budget for next season as well, which is something that I'm really looking forward to having. As you can see, Hector Vialba has scored 49 goals in 46 games, so he's only one goal away from his 50th overall of the season so far, which I just think is absolutely incredible. Um, I never would have predicted that. I, that's the most amount of goals I've ever scored with a player in a season in any FIFA game ever, I'm pretty sure. So Hector Vialba has really become a new hero, and um, I think that's just all awesome we're going to our first game of the episode this is against Ajax at the King Power Stadium we lead 2-1 on aggregate having scored two away goals in Amsterdam elsewhere Manchester United are playing Inter and uh, they have a 3-1 lead in that game so it looks as though there is a place in the final up for grabs uh, against Manchester United uh, assuming Inter Milan don't complete an amazing comeback we went with Tyler Blackett and Martinelli in defense um, just because of the fixture congestion being an obvious uh, serious thing in this game you know, I find it so funny in FIFA, the way, like, in this one, without a doubt, pace is the most important thing in the entire game, and then second is probably dribbling or something like that. Um, like, it's really amazing that fitness isn't the most important thing in FIFA, like, given that it's a game that revolves largely around football, like, um, fitness just seems to be kind of very static, like, there are some players who have better stamina than others, and that's pretty much it, like, the rest of it, I don't know, I just find that quite interesting, like, it's never a reason that you wouldn't sign a player is because he's too injury prone, like, it doesn't really seem to come onto people's radars and stuff. Like, it doesn't seem to hinder anything. Um, I, I find that quite weird. I don't know why I decided to bring that up, but it's just something I was thinking about earlier on today. But uh, in the 21st minute of this game, the ball comes to Klassen inside the box, who plays it back into Zivkovic, and Zivkovic scores, giving the Amsterdam team an early lead in this game on the night. The aggregate scores leave it at 2 all, meaning we would still go through on the away goals rule. But Ajax are very, very happy with their goal, and it seems to mark the beginning of an incredible comeback for them um at least that's what they believe. We come forward seven minutes later with Ki Sung Young on the ball. He plays it into Vialba, who gets into a very good position, but his left-footed shot is straight at the goalkeeper. I wanted him to hit it with his right and finesse it into the corner, but he went for the, the finesse shot straight at the goalkeeper, which I hate when they do. Then Ajax came forward in the 32nd minute uh, with a shot that was saved well by um, Jack Butland in our goal and then eventually cleared away. We got kind of lucky with that clearance, I thought. Then we come up to the 34th minute of the game with Zivkovic on the ball once more. He chips the ball into Klassen, who goes very close to giving the visit visitors uh, an even greater margin of lead but uh, in the 37th minute we came forward with the ball coming into Dwight Gale in an advanced position he has a look up ahead of the defender and then turns back inside for safety his cross finds Origi in the box but uh, the Belgian's header was just over the bar unfortunately enough then we got a free kick in the 45th minute which Vialba stepped over and the goalkeeper did a great job of keeping out of the goal but it was pretty good to get a, a free kick so close to going in because I don't really score many of them but in the 47th minute of this game the ball comes to Zivkovic who plays a really nice one too with class before getting in ahead of Martinelli and finishing around Jack Butland into the back of the net to make it 2-0 to Ajax and to put them ahead, uh, further ahead on the night and ahead on in the tie overall, which was really, really bad news for us because we hadn't really made much of an impact on the game so far. But uh, in the 56th minute, Ajax came forward once more. We tried to clear it, but did it like a really bad job of doing so. And eventually they retained possession with uh, Vergever on the ball, or however you pronounce his name. He goes forward and plays as a Serrero, who plays it back into him. And then Klassen picks the ball up and 
fires it into the back of the net to strengthen their lead even further as they go 3-0 up. And at this point, we would require three goals in order to progress, and it just wasn't looking like it would happen. But Vialba came forward in the 60th minute uh, with no options anywhere, and I was playing on all-out attack at this point, but the ball gets uh, played into Jeffrey Schlupp, who goes very close to giving us the lead. Sadly, or sorry, to pull in a goal back. Sadly, he doesn't manage to do so, but we come forward in the 70th minute with Origi heading the ball down into Jeffrey Schlupp, who does manage to pull a goal back for us, and at this point, we only need two more goals, and with Ajax playing largely on the back foot, it did look as though it was possible, but we entered the final 10 minutes of the game with Eisebria playing the ball into Sigdorsen, Sigdorsen, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but he uh, eased off Martinelli in defence, and he finished for a 4-1 lead for Ajax as we completely crumbled and threw the game away against a formidable force in Ajax and the way that they played in that game they were absolutely impossible to play in every area of the pitch and because of that we're not going to get anywhere in the Europa League. We're not going to get to the final. And this is our exit in the semi-final, which is so, like, such a massive shame. Like, I've said this at several points in this series uh, about second leg performances for me and how sometimes the AI and the way that they play, it's just impossible to do because of the fact that they were a goal down or two goals down. They went into the game with that mentality of having to win. And because of that, they played a really attacking game on legendary difficulty. And it was just so difficult to get anything against them. But um, we come out of that game. I just showed you guys a look at the league table because Chelsea actually dropped points uh, while we were playing Ajax. They were playing against Liverpool and they drew one all against Liverpool I think it was so we're not gonna overtake them if we win our games in hand but we will only be one point behind them so if they get one more draw in the final run in and we win all of our games then we can actually overtake Chelsea and we can win the league but uh, it's still out of our hands we still need them to fumble once more and to slip up and to maybe get a loss or a draw but uh, as long as they don't win every single game from here on out and we do win every single game then we'll win the league but that is a big ask against a very informed team but uh, this match was against Everton who actually find themselves in the relegation zone in the league which would be quite interesting to see them go down um, it's a shame in this game though if a team gets relegated you can't really like uh, farm their players or anything like that like you can never sign a player from a team just because they get relegated they stay loyal to the club regardless because I tried to sign James Ward-Prowse uh, from Southampton and they wanted 19 million and that was it like in real life he would have been handing in a transfer request in that situation and moving you know but um, the FIFA's just not like that I suppose but in the 56 minute of this game we finally take the lead with what felt like our first shot of the entire game because everything were all over us before that point and it was Mike and Leite who did it and it was in the it was just before the hour mark and like we completely changed the formation at half time and completely changed the way that we were playing the style of play and everything and uh, that's what led to that but then Everton came forward just on the hour mark with Luke Garbutt uh, on the on the right hand side of the pitch he plays it into James McCarthy who finds Naismith and Naismith's shot going right under Casper Schmeichel I thought that was terrible goalkeeping but but mainly because I was just really frustrated at them equalising immediately after we'd fought so hard to score. But we came forward three minutes later with Zuccolini playing the ball into Vialba, who did really well to get a shot on target at that point, I thought. But the goalkeeper palmed it away. And then ten minutes later, we came forward once more with uh, Julian Brandt on the ball. And he has a look up and plays it into the path of Valer Brasson, who plays it into Hector Vialba, who eventually gets the finish on it to get his 50th goal of the season overall. I don't know what it is in the league for him. I think it was his 32nd. But... Um, an absolutely phenomenal return from him. That's what wins the game. We, we win 2-1 and take three points from Everton, which is essential in this title run. But our next game is against Arsenal and would surely not be as easy, even though this is the most confident I ever was going into a game against Arsenal because I'm pretty sure that we defeated them at the Emirates Stadium, which um, that always gives me a boost. Like I feel like with some teams, you have a sort of um, a challenge to beat them. Like It's difficult, but then once you learn to do it, you'll always do it. Hull City are a good example of that and QPR as well. Um, teams like that that I play against it like there's a point where I just figure them out and I figure out how to play against them but Arsenal did take the lead in the seventh minute through a short corner routine that led to Jack Wilshere's head uh, finding the back of the net well his header finding the back of the net his head didn't find the back of the net that would be impressive for FIFA but in the ninth minute the ball comes through to Aaron Ramsey in an advanced position and his left footed shot is palmed away by Casper Schmeichel but uh, Arsenal having some early dominance in this game until the 13th minute when Scott Sinclair comes forward and he uh, crosses it in ahead of Debussy the key 
keeper comes out and palms it away but Tom Ince is there to belt it into the back of the net and the empty net essentially as well as the goalkeeper came out and he equalised for us then in the 19th minute we came forward once more with Fabian Delft's chip ball finding Origi who gets in ahead of Chambers and is eventually dragged back meaning he couldn't actually finish and the referee awarded a penalty we didn't get a replay of the penalty shot as well which was really weird but Vialba steps up and finds the back of the net albeit luckily because it was a very bad penalty but he gets his 51st goal of the season overall and we take the lead against Arsenal which is incredible um I wanted to say as well a lot of people were telling me um you know to play Origi up front uh, along with um along with Vialba because he's got good finishing and good pace so that's what I did in this game and uh, he eventually did kind of find his feet as well in the 48th minute here as he takes round Kieran Gibbs and does pretty well but he sees his shot go just wide that's to be expected though I think Vialba would have probably hit that wide as well because neither are left footed players so that's just the way that it goes but in the 72nd minute Cazorla plays the ball to Meza Ozil who I think came on as a second half substitute for Arsenal and uh, Ozil goes for the left footed shot and even though he's a left footed player that was an absolutely abysmal shot in the 77th minute Scott Sinclair plays the ball into Julian Brandt who plays it back into Sinclair who has a look up and finds Origi who goes for the volley a really good effort too um, it was on target but the goalkeeper punched it away and then into the final 10 minutes of the game we go with Tom Ince on the ball taking it round per Mertesacker in the box he goes wide to uh, Sinclair who finds Ki Sung Young who goes back into Scott Sinclair he plays it to Origi who was unmarked in the centre but his curling shot hits off the post and comes back out that's how the game ended another 2-1 victory for us the second consecutive one which is great and um, we do manage to defeat Arsenal and complete the double over them for this season that's what I think anyways I'm not too sure but um yeah that's how that game ended that's how the episode ends hopefully we will win the title I haven't played ahead from this point but our next game will be against Cardiff and as you can see from the league table we're just one point behind Chelsea with three games to go so the final run-in will be in the next episode and that'll be the last episode actually so uh, that's pretty interesting but hopefully you guys looking forward to that if you are please do leave a like on this video that would be much appreciated i've been el de niro thanks for watching